Hey, welcome back everybody. And what we're looking at today, well, this is where you don't want to start out at. You don't want to start, if you're a new prepper, you don't want to start out with the top dollar stuff. You don't want to start out prepping all with your uh, freeze-dried foods, MREs, and all that kind of stuff because this stuff is going to cost you so much money. All right, now this video is prone to the beginners. Anybody out there that's beginning and you're, you're trying to figure out what to do, you know, the first thing you probably think about when you're thinking about trying to prep is the long-term food storage, which is your freeze-dried foods and MREs, all right? Because these freeze-dried foods will last for 25, 30 years. And everybody thinks that, they, you know, this could be a good place to start, which it isn't. You have to remember, this is what you want to be buying in the fourth quarter, and you've got about a minute or so left in the game. All right? All right, you want to start with your basic products. As I've been telling you in a lot of videos that I've done, you want to start off with your canned goods and everything. So this is something good to have, yes, very much. I mean, this is a bonus, but you want to make sure that you have this at the end of the game, all right? because this will cost you the most money. So now let me move this stuff out of the way and let's get going on some of the other products. <clears throat> So now we talked about the MRE, the freeze-dried foods, you know, those are really good, all right? Now something that you got to really be careful of with any type of canned goods, especially anything that has tomatoes, tomato sauce, any other type of stuff, or canned fruit. Now I don't have any canned fruit in my house, I just choose not to buy it because if I don't like to have it in my, um, my stockpile just because it doesn't last that long. Anything with tomatoes in it, tomato sauce, anything, they will start to break down. The acid starts to break the cans down. And on these cans that have the pull top, you have to be very careful because if that gets dented in a little bit or something like that, there could be a small, it develops a small little air hole in there. And it'll cause this stuff to go bad. One, two, three. You want to try to get cans that are like this, that are sealed on both ends, and you have to have a manual can opener to open in an emergency situation. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have these things in your stockpile, okay? You just have to make sure that you're watching them and you're making sure that, you know, you keep uh, your stock and everything rotated so that if you do have this kind of stuff, it's getting eaten before, you know, it goes bad. Now, one way that you can tell if it's going bad, all right? If it's bloated, all right, if the can's bloated, if it's bulging at either end, anything like that, toss it out. Don't even keep it. Toss it right out. Don't even take a chance. If you open up a can of anything, it doesn't matter if it's a tomato product, if it's green beans, it doesn't matter what it is. If you open it up and if it smells bad, it tastes bad, you know, you take a small taste, do not even chance it. Throw it in a trash can. All right. That was just a little food 101. All right. So we'll move those things right out of the way. All right, moving on down the line. We're going to start off with your DAC ham. All right. Now these things are really good. All right. They're packaged very well. They last for a very long time past the expiration date. All right. The one thing you have to be careful once again is this seal because it's not completely sealed like the front is all right it has that pull and you pull that right off all right makes it easy to get into you just have to make sure this doesn't get dented and that way it doesn't break the seal all right so you need to make sure you're storing these kind of things somewhere where they're not going to get damaged all right you want to store all your your canned goods and everything else in a cool dry place optimal temperature is probably between 62 65 in that area to about around 75 degrees all right so don't store this in a damp basement don't store it in a garage you know you want to make sure that it's in a controlled environment all right now one tip with these these deck hams 
a lot of people say, and I agree, I've had these, all right, because they're really good, all right, but they're salty, all right? You need salt in order to preserve, all right? The trick with that is, is if you want to try to get the sodium down a little bit, when you open this up and take it out, if you rinse it under just a little bit of cold water, that helps wash off the residue of the salt and stuff off the outside of the ham, and it does lower a little bit, and it makes it so it's not so salty. But these are a great investment to have and to have in your supplies. Moving on down the line. Canned chicken, all right? Now, <clears throat> the best place to buy some of this stuff is right at Walmart, all right? They have the best prices and everything else. You can buy them single, you can buy them in a two pack, you can buy them in a four pack, the whole nine yards, all right? Once again, you just wanna make sure that you're storing it properly and you shouldn't have any problems, all right? <clears throat> now, chicken, you can also buy the canned chicken in different types of flavors. Now they have a barbecue one and they have, I uh, forget what the other one was. I think it was a teriyaki, at least in my Walmart. But the barbecue one you have to be careful of because once again, people were back to the acid part. So you wanna make sure you keep that separate from your regular uh, preps. And this way here, you can use that before you have to use say one of these or something and you don't have to worry about it going bad because these will last for a very long time. Moving on down the line, tuna fish, all right? Now you can get tuna fish however you want it. If you want tuna in water, fine. If you want it in oil, fine, all right? The key is tuna fish will last for a very long time after its best buy date. Now the best buy date, remember folks, is only for the company that has processed this and that's when they say that the product inside these cans will be good too, all right? We all know that they will last a quite a long time after that date. That's just the date when the stores have to start pulling it off the shelf, but it is still good to eat. So don't throw it in a trash can just because it's past its date. You're wasting your money. <clears throat> Next on the list, everybody's favorite, spam, all right? Now, I know a lot of people don't like spam and everything else, but this is known to last for years if it's stored properly. I mean years. There's so much stuff in this, it won't go bad. I mean, eventually, maybe after a very long time, it might, but spam is something you can fall right back on. And they have all different types of flavors. I mean, there is just all kinds of flavors and stuff. So you can get them low sodium. You can get all the flavors. It's whatever you want. But Spam is a good meat product to have on hand. All right. Moving down the line. Kind of sticking with the, the Spam a little. Vienna sausages. Ooh, everybody likes Vienna sausages. All right, these are the original, all right? You can get them in a six pack, you can buy them a single, however you wanna do it, all right? Now these things are kinda of like a hot dog crossed with Spam, in a sense. But, if you take and you heat these suckers up, or fry them up, they're actually really, really good, you know? I mean, you can eat them right out of the can, I mean, that's a give me, but I mean, if you can cook these up and serve them with a meal, you got something good. All right. Next, we're getting down there, folks. <clears throat> this isn't in a can, but this is for demonstrations purposes. Rice. We're talking about stuff that lasts for a very long time, okay? You take your rice, you can store it, like I did in this Mylar bag. You throw an oxygen absorber in here, then I put it into a five-gallon bucket, and you're good to go. This will probably outlast you as long as no bugs get in it. It'll be good for very, very, very long time. Now, a lot of people do. Um, I've done several videos on rice. I have um, talked about several different ways. A lot of people like to freeze their rice first and then put it into their Mylar bags, vacuum seal them, however you want to do it. Uh, you can put them in jars and vacuum seal them. The whole nine yards. There's a bunch of different ways. If you need more information on how to package your rice, check out my playlist um, on rice. I have a playlist just for rice, and this way here, it'll give you all your information, but if you store this right, 
This will outlast you probably in the long run. Next on the list. Now, if, it, if emergency has hit and you're an avid coffee drinker, you have to have your coffee every morning, like me, all right, or it's not a good day, instant coffee. Freeze-dried instant coffee, all right? Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, I can't stomach in instant coffee. You know, it's just, oh, it's, nope, I can't do it, whatever. But you have to remember, instant coffee will last, it's freeze-dried. It'll last forever. It's another one of those things. You know, you can take it out of this. I haven't opened this. This is still sealed. But you can take this out of here. You can put it into a Marlar bag with a oxygen absorber in there. Get all the air out. And that coffee will last as long as the last product that I'm getting ready to show you. All right. <clears throat> so freeze-dried coffee could be your friend. Now, if you can find the number 10 cans of coffee that are similar to this on the top has the metal not that plastic pull top has to be metal and it's a number 10 can that will also last for a very long time hands down all right so instant coffee now for the last thing on the list that we're showing today which is kind of ironic if you really think about it all right <clears throat> we are talking honey now it's the ironic thing and the funny thing really about this is, is they do put an expiration date on this. All right. Now, anybody that knows anything about honey and the history of honey also know that they did find this in ancient times and it was still good that they pulled out of the pyramids. So this honey will take and outlast all of us that are watching this video. All right, so honey is a good thing to have on hand. You can cook with it. You can add it to drinks. Um, I'll give you a little tidbit of advice that I have done personally. If you have a very bad sunburn, of course, you're going to have to have some way to clean yourself off afterwards. But if you have a very bad sunburn, you can take and put honey on your sunburn, and it helps pull the heat right out of your sunburn. I had a real bad second to third degree sunburn on my back years ago and <clears throat> put honey on it and it did work all right but like i said you got to make sure you have some way to clean yourself off afterwards because it's a mess but it works so honey is the number one thing that will outlast us all good old honey so this has been some of the things that will last a very long time that you can put into your stock. You can go to the store probably with 50, 50, 60 bucks and you could sit here and you, and you could start, you know, building your own stockpile getting it ready you know it doesn't take much and especially right now with this time of year you got to remember it's the holiday season folks and they're all having their sales so now is the perfect time for preppers to prep so get out there start prepping start being prepared And until next time, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.